I wouldn't suggest it to everybody in this room, but some of us should do this, and that is ask ourselves what normal market forces won't do. I feel obligated to do what normal market forces don't do because if they will do it, they'll do it, and probably better than me. So it's very, very key, and what the market suggests and what consumers want and what consumers need is okay, but only okay. Uh, Steve Jobs, whom I knew very well and worked with an awful lot in his early days, no concept of a focus group that was much more about looking at what market forces weren't telling us. I had a, the great, great benefit of knowing Marvin Minsky all my life. He just died a couple of weeks ago. Uh, and Marvin was the founder of the field of artificial intelligence, and he's the one that taught me, he and his colleague Seymour Papert, to be meta, to sort of, whenever you're in a design session or, a, or a, you know, a meeting, a brainstorming meeting, before you completely jump into the subject, pop out of it a bit. Come up a level and look at sort of, look at looking at the subject. Um, Seymour had this wonderful, wonderful phrase about thinking, and that was that you can't think about thinking unless you think about thinking about something. Now unpack that and apply it to that. You can't learn about learning unless you learn about learning about something, et cetera, et cetera. You apply that kind of meta to many things, and common sense is indeed common, but it's also the hardest thing, and Minsky spent his life trying to deal with common sense. So yes, there's a lot of work going on. AI now, a term he and his colleagues coined, is, 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 is all over the place. People are seeing it and doing it in many different ways. But in all due respect, the ability to play Go, while it includes many of the elements that you would think would be the constituent parts uh, of intelligence, it's very different than what these guys were talking about in the 60s. In the 60s, when you had dinner with Marvin Minsky, he said, let's understand humor. What constitutes being funny? Why do we appreciate music? These are questions that we still don't know the answers. Now, I'm not saying we're going to get to the moon or drive safely through cities because machines have humor or appreciate music, but that's a different way of looking at intelligence and one that has sort of fallen off the table. Some of the things that were dismissed and then took a long time to happen, why were they dismissed and then are there things like them today that are going to come back and surprise us. And one of the first images I'm going to show you, which is just for me a reminder because it doesn't mean too much, uh, this is a computer display that, or into which you typed uh, an address where you wanted a car to pick you up and an address of where you wanted the car to take you. And that's a display of some, whatever, 10, 12 people that have requested a car at that moment. And this program, I actually worked on it, was in 1965. 1965, it was running on a pretty rare display that was uh, at MIT's Lincoln Laboratories, and it was called CARS. I even remember the acronym of the computer program, which stood for Computer Aided Routing System. And you look at that and you say, wow, that's Basically, 50 years ago, Uber comes along. Why did Uber happen? It's not that it took 50 years to get the computational power of that display. It's not that it took 50 years to get the interactivity or the thing. What took the 50 years was the coincidence of all these other things happening. GPS, 1978. Handheld devices, you can pick your date. The ability to sort of be connected and send messages, 
mapping systems. All those things converge, so suddenly you have in your hand a mapping system, a messing system that knows where you are, etc., and then boop, that kind of thing makes sense. I just want to talk about this for a quick second because when we made our first touch sensitive displays, which go back to, to the uh, late 60s, early 70s, people wrote technical articles, peer reviewed articles about how stupid it was. And <laughs> the one I remember the most had three points. One, when you touch the display, your finger occludes what you're trying to touch. Hence, it's better to use a mouse. Two, that when you touch, your finger doesn't have much resolution, so it's like writing a postcard with a cigar. Three, when you touch, you will get the screen dirty. Literally, those were the arguments against touch, and in this particular display, touch was, was in fact had an additional layer of pressure because there's enough friction between your finger that you can introduce forces in the plane. Touch has come, it's emerged, it's important, it's part of our lives. It's in fact the getting to be, or if not depending who you are and how much you, you text, etc., is the most common and will be even more so uh, as we go along. Everything in this world will communicate with every other thing in this world, and everything will know where it is, and every display that can be will be, and they'll also be touch sensible, touch sensitive. Now, what's happening with tablets and phones and so on and so forth is that the connectivity is going to be driven harder and harder and harder, um, whether you take a civic or a commercial route. What I hope happens is that people don't abandon laptops for tablets because tablets are fundamentally consumption devices. You want kids to make things. You want kids to write things. You want kids to do things. And I was with uh, uh, one of our faculty at a presentation he just gave, and a parent raised their hand and said, excuse me, sir, how many hours a day do you think it's okay for a child to look at a screen? And he said, you know, it's not screen versus paper. You know, if they're drawing on paper, you don't call it paper time. Uh, it's, it's what are they doing? If they are just consuming, limit that. But if they're making things, don't worry about it. It's, it's in other words, Make it such that kids make things, share things, that it's part of that side of learning yeah. that you bet learning by doing versus consuming. And we're becoming a little too consumption oriented. What's the next one that is going to have an elevator like impact? And it is actually the self driving car. And the self driving car will change the form of cities because suddenly you need one-tenth of them. They don't need parking. There won't be parking spaces. It'll, there are all sorts of things that will change with self-driving cars that will change the form of cities that depending on the city, you have numbers in excess of 25% of the surface covered by road or parking. And then I think you'll see the kind of stuff that a lot of computation in what I would call the public realm. And I think the public realm needs more computation, partly to help things like self-driving and delivery and, and land-based drones. I'd be um, sort of not 100% genuine when I say it, but I feel that the startup culture has gone a bit too far and that too many of our students are starting silly little companies to do the next app to sell something, blah, blah, and not enough of those students are working on big, hard problems. And the number of people that see themselves as tackling long-term, very hard problems is a diminishing number. And I hear expressions that 
really bother me. Uh, one that is commonly used uh, by people at Google and, and used by Mark Zuckerberg is fail fast. Mm. Huh? Fail fast? That doesn't make sense. I've always thought that, that when you fail, you work harder, you look at it harder, that not everything is just spaghetti you throw on the wall, if it sticks, fine, if it doesn't, throw another piece over here and then do this and do that and do that. You know, sometimes you just have to buckle down and really, if you're gonna work, pick one that's easy to talk about, nuclear fusion, let's, let's you know, you're gonna fail fast, it's gonna take years to do it and it's, it's hard work and it's, 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 a different, it's a different mentality than going from pillar to post.